Hello everyone and welcome to Moonlight Zoo. My name is Elisa and I'm finally back. First off, I want to apologize for being on a hiatus recently, but a lot of things have been going on with my life. Exciting things, but also frustrating things. Paper, for example, decided to restrict my account for no particular reason after the pre-order, so I have to wait six months now for getting my money. And also, I've been working in my part-time job a lot lately. Moonlight Jewel hasn't been my main event, but it will be from now on. I will be moving into a new studio, which we are renovating right now. It's really exciting and I can't wait to show you the process in a little video that I will be making on it. And I have even more exciting news. I will be releasing some merch on September 26th at 8 p.m. CET in my Moonlight Jewel shop. Link is in the description box below. So make sure to stay until the end of the video to see what I'm dropping. I'm also currently working on my own art vinyl figurine that I will be releasing. I'm also making a video on that, so stay tuned for it. But enough for the intro, let's finally start on today's project. As you might remember, a while ago I made some cyberpunk doll designs and asked you guys which one you liked most. Design C was the winner and that's the doll we are making today. Alright, let's get started! Today will be the first time I'm working on a LOL OMG surprise fashion doll. I got this little cutie already prepared for customizing from the wonderful Stardust Studio on Instagram. First off, I'm gonna remove the face with pure acetone. The paint was really thickly applied on the doll, but soon she was all cleaned up. Then I removed the head from the body and cut it open to get rid of all the hair since the neck hole is way too small for that. I removed the paint from the scalp too and used some super glue to glue the head back together and put some tape over the cut to let it dry. Before painting the face I'm using some epoxy scalp to sculpt her some pointy little alien ears and some fangs. I always end up mixing too much epoxy putty because usually the amounts you need for dolls are very small. For blending in the epoxy sculpt I use a silicone tool. Try to work as clean as possible, the better it will look in the end. This is how the ears looked after sculpting. Time for some thanks. I take the tiniest amount of epoxy putty and apply it to the doll's mouth. I could have also just drawn on the teeth, but I like it when they actually have a little bit of a three-dimensional look. Press and cut the putty in shape until I'm satisfied. These teeth are really, really small. After the sculpting process for the head, I carefully mix the skin tone with acrylics and paint the ears in the same color as the skin. It took a bit time until I got the color perfect, but in the end you can't tell the difference. Alright, time for the face. I sealed her already two times and first just add a bunch of micro glitter and blushing with soft brushes and pastels to her little cheeks. After sealing her again, I'm starting to sketch out the eyes. For the eyeshadow, I got inspired by Colors OMG LOL repaint on Instagram and wanted to go in that direction with my repaint. This face will be pretty much the only time I'm going to use pencils for this repaint. I will be mostly using gouache paint and brushes to give her eyes a super clean look. 
You could think that sketching out big eyes is easy, but actually it is quite hard because you can see every mistake really quickly, so I needed quite a while until I sketched them out perfectly. Making the second eye symmetrically fit is a whole other story, but after trying for a bit I managed. Looks good so far. Now I'm already going in with gouache paint and first paint the iris in different shades of pink. I'm trying to work as neat as possible with the brush. Then I'm adding some eyeliner with a lime yellow green color. For some reason my camera stopped recording how I added black and white, but it's literally just the same process. To line the lips, I first slightly sketch them out with a pencil before going in with a very dark purple. Then I'm taking some UV neon colors and add them to the eyeliner and also to the eye whites. Applying these colors isn't that easy because you can slightly see mistakes under the UV light, but if you check and correct it from time to time it works quite good. Time for some lashes. These were quite hard to paint and I ended up not painting all of them because it didn't look that good. I needed a long time to make them look good, but it's worth to take that time. Looking great! Now I'm giving her some eyebrows. First I sketch them out with some pastel chalk dust before taking a brush and some paint to paint the exact shape. I'm using slow soft brush strokes to paint them. After that I just add some more details like the cheek freckles in pink UV color and of course the eye highlights. I first sketch them out with a pencil and then go in with gouache paint and then with some UV paint.
Let's see the glow effect. Ah, it looks so good! In the end, I just gloss her lips and eyes with clear resin for an absolute perfect finish and cure it under the UV lamp. And here's the finished face. I love the gloss and the color so, so much. Time for some body mods. For the cyborg neck part, I'm first sketching and carving in some lines onto the doll body with my Dremel. Here's one side done already. After both sides were carved in, I'm adding some resin and wire to glue them into the carved lines. I'm adding piece by piece and finish everything up with some rhinestones until I have something like this. Then I painted everything black with acrylic paint and let it dry thoroughly. I think I added two layers of paint for a good opacity. Then I'm taking more clear resin and add it to the whole cyborg neck part and cure it under the UV lamp. Time for chrome. I use nail art chrome effect powder for that and just rub the powder onto the robotic neck and seal it again with a thin layer of resin. This part is so satisfying and fun. For smaller parts I use a brush instead of a sponge. And this is how it looks all done. Now let's cut off her leg with my Dremel. If you use the Dremel for cutting the doll leg, make sure to be careful not to slip and accidentally cut into other parts of the doll. Also wear a mask because the smell is really not that nice. For the last part I used an X-Acto knife and then just cleaned up the edges a bit. My amazing friend Blue Pixie was so nice and sculpted this cyberpunk leg in Blender for this project and recorded a bit of the process. 3D sculpting is a great method to traditional sculpting, but it requires just as much time and effort and the leg turned out incredibly amazing in the end. I then printed the leg in black resin on my Elegoo Morse. To attach it, I drilled a hole in the leg and the thigh of the doll and put a toothpick in it to connect the two pieces. Then I use a strong glue and put both pieces together.
perfect. Now I gloss and chromify, is that a word? The leg as well and add some tiny details too. Body is done! Blue Pixie also made some tiny antenna for this doll. I'm just going to paint them pink first. Then I add some Mod Podge to them and dazzle some pink glitter onto them. To finish them up, I add UV resin and let it cure. Perfect! Then I take my doll head and drill some holes into it for inserting the antenna. After that, I just push them in. They fit very firmly, so I don't need to glue them. She looks so cute! Aww! Time for some hair! I painted her scalp already and prepared some neon yarn rifts in darker and lighter green. With my hot glue gun I attach weft by weft and cut and style the hair layer by layer so I can cut it properly. I just continue this process and work my way up all the way to the top of the head. To make the part and the hair around the antenna, I glue on the wefts and flip them over for a clean finish. You can also use a little hair iron to tame the hair down better. And here's the hair all done! I love her haircut so much! Okay, time for her outfit. First I'm gonna make her little bra. For that I'm cutting it out from a shiny pink fabric and sew the little darts first. Then I'm gluing around all the seams with fabric glue. Now I just need to attach the little straps and add a closure. Looks so cute!
Unfortunately, my camera corrupted the footage of me making the harness, but I just cut out stripes from holographic fabric vinyl I ironed on fabric and glued them together with rings to create the harness shape. For the vest, I couldn't find a good looking teal colored fabric, so I used this metallic purple fabric and layered it with thick interfacing and black jersey. I added the seam lines for a down jacket effect first. Then I cut the pieces out and sewed together the shoulder seams. Next I'm cleaning up the armhole seams by gluing them to the inside of the vest. After that I just close the side seams and then add a bottom cuff made from a folded jersey straps to the vest. I'm doing the same to the color part as well. Last but not least, I'm adding a black plastic zipper part that I still had from an old zipper to the front of the vest. And the vest is done! It's so tiny and cute! For the doll's skirt, I just cut out the shape from a thick iridescent PU leather and added a little snap button to the back. Now for a really exciting part, the shoes! Blue Pixie made these amazing shoe bases for me that I printed out in resin. First I wanted to glue a round fabric on the tip of the shoe, but it didn't really work, so I had to remove everything again and decided to just gloss the front part of the shoes with resin. After the resin cured, I added the little tongue pieces from a thick shiny PU leather. For the back part of the shoe, I sewed together two pieces from the shiny PU leather and hemmed down the seam allowances. Then I take my small scissors and punch some holes into the pieces to add these teeny tiny little eyelets. I put in three on each side. Looks so cool! Then I just use some strong glue to attach the shoe part to the shoe base and let it dry thoroughly. For the platform sole, I add a stripe from iridescent PU leather. I glue it in place.
place and finish it up with a small stripe I put over the seam lining. I just needed to lace them with black elastic thread. I also added some black glitter to the bottom part of the shoes. I love how they turned out so much. The last pieces I made were a little stocking for the non-cyborg leg a little arm sleeve and a cute little chain belt that I made while streaming on Twitch. And yeah, we're done! Meet Nia, my cyberpunk alien girl. She's definitely one of my favorite dolls amongst all the repainted dolls that I've made. I absolutely love the UV neon effect on her and I kind of want to make more dolls like that now. But now you might wonder, what about the merch that I was talking before? So let me head over to my correspondent, not a fake name. Thanks Elisa and welcome to the merch forecast. We have some very, 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 very hot items today. Look at this Moonlight Jewel iridescent hoodie. Oh my God. It's so shiny. It's so good. Wow. I love it. Next we have the Moonlight Jewel Retro 90s shirt. That's giving me some sitcom vibes here. Look at this tote bag. It can fit so many dolls in it. Totally awesome. Huh? And we also have some buttons with all the artworks of Lilla from the artist Gloomy Chew. They are so freaking awesome. You can put them on your bag, your jacket, wherever you want. Let's see what the man on the street has to say about the merch. So here we are on the street with a stranger who coincidentally happened to wear the Moonlight Jewel merch. How do you like it? It's for, it's... Thanks for the input. Back to the studio. Thanks, not a fake name, for showing us these super hot items. And if you want to have a chance to pick them up, the pre order starts on September 26th at 8 pm CET. It will be open for one week, and after that, I will be producing the merch and send it out to you guys within two weeks. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, a very special thanks to my dear patrons. Without your support, I could not do what I love most. I'm also so happy I can finally send out rewards again. So if you are interested in getting doll patterns, iron-on fabric prints, 3D printed doll accessories, or even repainted figurines, go check out my Patreon. Link is in the description box below. I'm also streaming on twitch.tv slash moonlightjewel, usually on the weekends, so if you have some time, come and say hi. So yeah, this is the last video I will be shooting in this studio. This studio will always have a special place in my heart because all my YouTube videos have been shot in here. But times change and I want to create even better content in the future for you guys. So let's look forward to the new chapter. Thank you all so much for watching. See you in the next video and in the new studio and have a beautiful creative day.